All right, gamers, today we're going to go to Porta Negra. Let's check it out. game Porta Negra you are going to pick uh, your player color uh, I'm going to choose the black player here I'm going to get the matching uh, board here it matches back on the board there the front looks the same but if you look on the back you can see which one's yours you're also going to start off with the first round here uh, and you're gonna have your little starting marker right there at zero you're going to have your own little three extra markers action markers to have on yourself you're also going to start off with five little builders to help you out. 20 uh, coins here that they call, I think it's Sinestri, I can't remember the name of it, but uh, just 20 coins, so 20 bucks is what you're starting off with. You're also going to get a little torch, which I'll talk about what the meaning of that is. And then, of course, you will also get some player cards. Now, everyone has a stack of player cards according to their color. I have the black one, but here, red has his own stack, yellow has his own stack, blue has his own stack. It's the same cards except they're all shuffled up and they're all going to come out at different times. Now, what you're going to do is you're also going to be, for setup, you're also going to be setting up uh, some of these builder cards over here. Uh, six of them, and you put them up on the board. I don't have enough room. I had to turn them sideways. And at the bottom of the board, I don't have any room for this, but you put down some of these called honor cards. You're going to put 14 of them out. And the honor cards can give you different things and the game, and I'll get to what more about this later. Now, setup for the game is fairly easy. What you're going to do is you're going to randomly draw these bricks from these brick tiles here, and it's going to let you know what to build. So, for instance, you start pulling them, and the first one says, okay, none in black, one in white, one in yellow, one red, one blue. Okay, so I do all that. I pick my next tile, and this one says, oh, none of those, white, yellow, red. And you keep going. This one's all but white. As you see, they're all different here. And you keep going to at least get 14. Now, once you have 14 total, doesn't matter where they are, that's what you're left with. If it ever gets less than uh, 7 or less, you're going to pull more of these tiles to get it back up to 14. When you run out of tiles, you'll take them, you'll shuffle them up again, and then start doling them out. So there's always going to be a wonky supply. If you see here, I have a lot of yellow in this game, but only one red. And by the way, these are so nice looking. I don't know if you can see that, but the detail in that's really nice. And when they stack like this, they look super nice in the game. So that's actually really cool. One of the things I like about the game is how much went into these uh, little stackers. And they give you this wonderful little box where you can carry them all in. That is just great. Um, anyway, so that is where you're starting with. Now, what you're going to do on your turn, all players are going to go around and uh, they're going to shuffle these and they're going to pick two of their action cards. Let's say I picked these two here. Now, we're gonna, I'm going to get to choose one of these actions to do. Whichever one, when it's my turn, I can choose one. The other one stays in my hand, then I'll draw up to another card and choose between those two. Eventually, you're going to run through this whole deck of cards. And when that happens, that's when the first round ends. And you would move these little, I love this little token, these little boat people, and you'll move them up to the next round. Now, in a three to four player game, you're only playing two rounds. If you're playing a two player game, though, there is a third round you'll have to do just to help you get along the track a little bit better. And by the way, you will pass that 100 marker. So, of course, they give you the 100 marker counter. And if you flip it over, it is the 200 marker counter. Oh, that is very fuzzy. But there it is, a 200 marker counter and 100. So you will be passing this at least once in the game, trust me. Uh, but anyway, you would get to pick from one of these two. Now, when it comes to my turn, I get to choose which one I want to play. Now, you see the torches? That tells me how many of these actions I can take. This one has five different actions. I can only take three of them. This one has three different actions. I can only take two of them. That's how it works. But you remember that little torch token I had before we start off with one? This allows you to take one more bonus action if you so choose to. Now, once you use this, you lose it, but there are ways of getting the torches or getting more torches in the game. 
So for instance, what do each one of these mean? Well, some of these are just buy actions. This one means I can buy any brick, either the brick I'm on or you know just any other brick out there. The brick I'm in front of, the one I'm in the land on, I can buy that brick. This one says I can buy a particular brick. Okay, So let's say that I start off, and you just randomly pick where you want to start off, it doesn't really matter, but I start off in the blue side. Well, if I chose this one, let's say I didn't even have the blue. Let's say, well, let's say I started in yellow even. Okay, well, I can't get a yellow brick. Oh, well, here I can. Yeah, I just activate that and I can get the yellow brick wherever I'm at. Now, if I want to go around and buy a black brick, can I do that here? No, this is the area you can buy yellow bricks. This is for uh, black, blue, and red. I have to be in those sections. The board's divided into four different sections. Now the white is kind of a wild, you can get that wherever you're at, but to get a particular color you have to be in that section. And to get to that one you must move around the board just like that. Now when you move around the board clockwise here, every time you move to a different section you're going to have to pay a coin to move. And you can move as many times as you want. You can move up to one, two, three times if you want. That's going to be three coins, but that's how movement goes along and that's how you can buy other things. So that's one of the tokens. Now remember I've got as many uh, actions as there are torches here. So I could use one to go there and then the next one I could do, I could grab a scroll. Scrolls are really good because the more scroll tokens, and these are the scroll tokens here, the more you have of those you can cash in for some of these honor cards. Now honor cards can get you different things. For instance for one scroll if this was available, I could get a black uh, building there. And I could get this one. Uh, one scroll gives me four coins and a torch. I mean, two coins gives me ten coins. Uh, two scrolls. So the more scrolls you have, the better chance you have at getting different stuff. So scrolls are always good. So maybe I want to take my second action, well right here, take my second action to get coins or maybe a third action to get things. Uh, uh, scrolls or coins. Now, you can also build as well. And so when you build, you have to be in that section you want to build at and build at one of these areas. Now here is like your little quarry here. It also tells you how much each of one of these is to buy. So if I was to get black, it's only going to cost me uh, one coin. Blue is two, red is three, uh, yellow is four, and white is five. The reason white is so much because it's a wild card. You can build it with any of these colors. So you like to get whites, even though they're super expensive. If you know, I'm trying to build a three yellow here, and I only have two yellow in my quarry, which by the way, it would look like this. Let's say I bought two yellow. Well, I'd take two from the stack and put it under the yellow section to remind me those are yellow. Now, what if I wanted to buy and there were no more, and if I wanted to buy two more? I can't because they're sold out. I can keep buying as long as there's some available. Now, I see on my board here, it's going to cost me four each. So those two cost me eight. Yikes. They get expensive. But as you know, the more expensive it is, the more money you're going to get when you're building stuff. So for instance, uh, if I move over here and building the wall, if I was to build uh, two blacks, let's say I had two blacks, I built it there. Well, first I put my little builder on top of that to show that it is mine, and I would gain what it says there, three victory points. So I'd go up one, two, three. Now if I had done that, but it was with a red tower instead, what if I had this red one? Remember, those are very expensive. They're three coins. Well, I built one floor right there on the wall and then put my build on top of it. For that one, I got three points. Man, it took me two blacks to get that three points. So as you see, it kind of builds up. If I put one white, it's worth five. Okay, So the more rare the building, the more you can build. Now you can build, the icons will tell you how much you need to build in each section. So it'll tell you if you need twos, if you need fours, if you need threes. Uh, except for the Porta Negra itself, the minimum is three, but you can have a maximum of however many you want. If I wanted to put down five yellows, how would I score that? Well, as you see here, there's a little score up, so down here. For every black you place up, it'd be worth one victory points. Blues are worth two, reds are three, yellows are four, and uh, uh, whites are five. So again, let's say if I put five, a, a, a tower five high of yellows, five times four is 20, I would move up. 20 points on the board. Now, whoever's last place in the round, they're the ones that are going to go first for the next round. That's how it determines whoever goes, whoever's last in points will go first every round. Uh, so anyway, that's what you're doing. You're running, you're, you're galloping through uh, these four cities and trying to build these uh, great things 
around the Porta Negra. And as you're doing that, you're gaining points. Now, there are certain uh, advantages to building in certain areas. For instance, these builder cards that I put out at the beginning, sometimes they may say, hey, you know what? Porta Negra would love you to build a black tower out there. If I do, not only do I get the points for building there, but I also get the card that's there. Now, why is this important? If I can get one of each building card, it's going to give, if I have one, it's just worth two points at the end of the game. If I have two matches, it's worth six. Three is 12. Four is 20. You can get several matches of these at a time. And so if I have two uh, of each kind, man, that's going to give me 40 points, 20 each at the end of the game. There's also some honor cards that may roll out that would trade up for that. So for instance, I mean, yeah, they give you some building cards there, but look, if you have all four, if you have two scrolls, trade in all four of those cards and we'll give you 30 points instead of the 20. Or you can trade up from 30 and get 42 points. Or from that 42 and get 56. I mean, it's insane how many points you can get as it rolls over. But this kind of gives you some incentive to build certain color towers in certain areas. And like I said, there is a big builder's deck here uh, full of other places of other colors and stuff they would need. I didn't really shuffle these. I just put a few out uh, for the video here. So what you're doing is you're going through, once you burn through all of these cards, everyone's gone through them. They've played the, very, uh, the last turn. You only have one card in your hand. That's the one you'll play. And then the round marker moves up and you'll play one more round for three to four players or if it's two players, you'll play a third round. Uh, now, in certain areas, as you are building, you're going to start accumulating bonus points. So, for instance, if you see here, I build a two tower and a one tower. I know that because my builder's on top of it. Well, because of that, if you build three, every, every three buildings you build in each section, doesn't have to be at the same time, but once you get to three, six, nine, twelve, the, the more you build, you're going to get some bonuses in that area. For instance, in this bonus, I would be able to pick up a white tower there and put it in my collection for free. If I was building at the Porta Negra, I would get a scroll and two additional builders. I'm going to need more builders because I only started with five. So I'm going to need more builders. If I build over here in the city, I would actually get five coins and an extra builder. If I build over here, I get a torch and extra builder. That's as long as I built at least three. Now, like I said, every three, you're going to get that reward once you build, and that's going to help you and to establishing, you know, getting more money, getting more power, getting more bricks, getting more builders, which is very important, and uh, keep building and try to fill up as many of these as possible and score as much as you can, because at the end of the game, you're going to tally up your score, tally up any of the cards you got, anything that you need to cash in, and the person with the most points wins. Final thoughts, what do I think about the game? Well, um, Stronghold Games uh, don't have many of their games. In fact, the one game I had of theirs, I gave away. Uh, it, it was okay. Um, so, not that big a fan on their stuff. This, this folks, is the best game they ever made. Uh, the thing that surprised me about this, uh, this is another game we played at BGG Con. And when we played it, uh, it seemed like it was going to take forever. This is going to drag on and on and on. But suddenly, you're only in two rounds with three to four players. So we're playing the first game, learn how the second game, this, and then it goes to the second round, and we're like, okay, now we're getting the hang of it. Oh, wait, it's, it's going to be over? It's just enough time. They were really smart to only make this two rounds uh, for three to four players because the game can drag. And I think they knew that. So they made it just two rounds. It really pays off in the end. Uh, I remember the first time we played, I was way behind. I was so far behind. Everyone else was getting more points. They were building more structures, but I was building where those cars were, were needing uh, sp specific blocks. And I kept trading up and trying to get more points and more points and more points. At the end of the game, I was like 50 points behind or 75 or something. I came back and won by, I, I, I want to say 10 points, but 7 or 10 points. Like, I just blew them away because I was playing a little bit more strategic game. While well, they were just going for as many points as they can get and put towers where they could and grab the points and run to the next one. For that reason, you don't know who's going to win Porta Nigra until the very end. And I love that. I love that. 
Uh, super fun, well-developed game, looks really nice, not much for the cardboard pieces. In fact, when I saw that, I almost packed this game back up, because like I said, I'm, I'm not a fan of Stronghold games that much, and I was like, oh man, is this going to be a cheap, you know, not not that much fun, more bogged down and other stuff, and you know, uh, Stronghold games is like, oh man, this game could have been fun, or it seemed fun at first, and then it faded away. Man, they timed it just right with Porta Negra. I, I knew I had to have the game once I played it. It's a great game, and gamers, it is well worth your time. Speaking of time, that's all I have for now. So until then, game on!